A narcisztikusnál minden a bűnről és a bűnhődésről szól. Ez a szervező elv ezek szerint az életében, szadista és mazohista is egyben. És mikor éppen melyik? People often confuse masochism with self-destructiveness. Masochism is not self-destructiveness. Masochism is opposite of self-destructiveness. Masochism is self-love. Masochism causes you pleasure because you love yourself. You're masochistic. It's the way to get pleasure. So, masochism is a form of self-love. Narcissist doesn't love himself, because first of all, there's no self. <clears throat> And he had been taught from early age that he is not lovable. He doesn't deserve to be loved. So, he also doesn't love himself. And therefore, by definition, the narcissist can never be a masochist. Masochists are people who seek pleasure via pain. But they seek pleasure. They want to, to have fun, you know? And the narcissist hates, uh, hates himself, or at least doesn't love himself enough to seek pleasure in any way. So narcissist, narcissist sadism and masochism, appear from the outside, are actually instrumental and functional. One of them is to control people, motivate them, control them, and so on. It's nothing to do with classic sadism. There's no joy from the pain. The pain doesn't give pleasure. It's just a way of asserting control, establishing social order, obtaining results. And in sexual settings, the sadism is, a, is part of the power play that the narcissist plays in every field of his life. You know? and, and it's therefore not sadism. And sadism must have a component of emotion. The sadist loves to hurt people. He loves to cause, to cause pain. It gives him pleasure to cause pain. That's not the case with Narcissus. Narcissus doesn't derive pleasure from causing pain. He derives pleasure with what he can make people do using pain. Pain is an instrument. And he derives pleasure with what he can make people do with his money. Also. He doesn't love money. Narcissus don't love money. They love what money can allow them to do to people. And they don't love pain, or enjoy pain, or inflicting pain. They love what, how they can use pain to motivate people. So it's about the narcissistic supply. These are tools. Sadism is a tool. Money is a tool. Being famous is a tool. The, uh, being feared is a tool. So these are all tools to obtain narcissistic supply. So he's not, a, he's not sadist in any psychological definition, and he's not a masochist. But he's self-destructive. Not all narcissists, but majority, vast majority are self-destructive. And it appears from outside like masochism. When the narcissist will, will seek masochism in sex, or in discipline, or when the narcissist will seek pain, or hurt, or wherever it is, is nothing to do with masochism. It has to do, again, with, fulfilling, with obtaining goals or fulfilling functions. So discipline will remind him of love and intimacy. Uh, if he's masochistic in, in a relationship with a, with a woman, it will fulfill other functions. Maybe the woman wants it. Maybe I'm, It's always goal-oriented or full functional or instrumental. Or, it's never pleasure for the sake of pleasure. There's no such thing with the Nazis, by the way, in anything, not only sex. So, I think the correct terms for the narcissist are instrumental, instrumental pain and self-destructiveness. And they move between these. Uh, now, when are they this and when are they this? Well, they are self-destructive when they, when they are collapsed. When they cannot obtain narcissistic supply, they want to self-destruct. And the main reason they want to self-destruct has less has to do something with punishment, of course, because it confirms that they are bad and unworthy and so on, so they deserve to be destroyed. Yeah? But I think on a, on a much deeper level, when the narcissist does not obtain supply, he feels that he does not exist. And self-destructiveness is exactly like self-mutilation, like cutting. It's a way to prove to himself that he is alive. So if you do something really self-destructive and you end up in prison, trust me, you feel very alive.
in prison. If you do something and you contract, if you have unprotected sex and you contract AIDS, from that moment you're very alive. It's, it's this threat, this challenge, this, this horror, this uh, destruction that wakes you up. Narcissus needs to wake up when he doesn't have supply. He, he's gradually, he is like the battery is running down. He's gradually, all the functions are, you know, like this, and he's like, like these dolls that run out of battery. And he needs to charge a battery. And a way to charge a battery is self-destructiveness. But he failed. He cannot get supply. There's only other way left is self-destructiveness. He self-destructs, he feels sufficiently animated and he feels, again, alive. Ironically, after self-destruction is when the narcissist is most productive. Uh, I, I wrote eight books in prison in 11 months. First, I went to prison. When I went, to, when I felt dead, I, I needed prison to wake me up. And when I was in prison, I wrote eight books. I wrote Malignant Self-Love in prison, okay. among other books. This was a period of my maximal productivity, never before, never after. And it's very common with Nazis. A BDSM következő típusa a szubmisszivitás, alárendelődés vagy a dominancia. Itt már megjelennek a különféle fétisek is, és a behódolás, szolgálat, önfeláldozás is. Például lábfét is, istennő szerepjátékok, gades, csizma vagy cipő, vagy harisnya fét is, vagy imádat. Azt mond meg nekem szem, hogy az amúgy az életben domináns, mondhatni szadisztikus, narcisztikus, aki a családját is bántalmazza, vagy zsarnokoskodik a munkahelyén, és mindent ő irányít, hogyan vágyhat mégis arra, hogy valakinek a szolgája legyen, aki pofonvágja, leköpi, csúnyán beszél vele, kikötözi, korlátozza őt, megalázza, akit ő mégis imád, kielégíti a vágyait, ahol csöndben marad, ahol nincsen döntése, nincsenek jogai, különben büntetést kap, ahol mesztelen, ahol sebezhető, ahol kiszolgáltatott erőtlen, ahol szörtelen, ahol fizikailag is okozhatnak neki fájdalmat. Lehet, hogy ez az igazi énjének a megnyilvánulása? Vagy a hamis énnek az elfolytott szükséglete? It's, um, the narcissist experiences a part of himself that he has no access to and that he denies and that he represses via someone else in a safe environment, because ultimately it's safe. Um, by, by not existing, because in these settings the narcissist stops to exist. Um, someone else has the will, someone else dictates, someone else decides, the narcissist finally can rest. The narcissist is, to be a narcissist is very energy depleting, it's very energy consuming. And you need to control everything, especially yourself, but also the world and everything and everyone around you. Everything is a threat, everything is, is frightening, everything. It's very, very tiring. At some point you want to rest. But to rest, to really rest, you need to have trust. And the narcissist is paranoid. He doesn't have trust. So he needs, he needs a second in command. He, ne he needs a co-pilot. He needs to say, uh, listen, I have to... I have to have a shot, I have to sleep for 20 minutes. In these 20 minutes, would you mind to take control of the airplane? You know? So he transfers the control, he transfers the wheel, and, and he can now relax, he can rest, he can sleep in a way, mentally sleep, for, for these 20 minutes. But if he doesn't transfer total control, then the whole exercise is undermined, is sabotaged. He needs, he needs to really sleep mentally. When we sleep, we don't exist. We don't control the environment, we don't make decisions, we don't, when we sleep. It's a state very similar to sleep. And in order to sleep, he needs to transfer all functions and all decision-making powers. If he transfers only some functions and some decision-making powers, then he needs to stay awake to control the rest. So it's, it's binary state, it's total. It's either or. Or zero or hero, nothing in between. And so when he finds someone he can trust, dominatrix or anyone that he can trust, he engineers a situation with zero risk, in effect. The situation is safe. It's a zero risk situation, but still allows him to go to sleep. 
he cannot go to sleep in, in, in the corporate headquarters when he's with the board of directors. He cannot go to sleep. He cannot say, for example, in the board of directors, John, would you mind uh, taking over? I'm, I want to sleep for 20 minutes. He cannot do this. He cannot do this with his wife. He needs to control all the time what she's doing, what she's not doing, because love is pain, pain is threat, threat is paranoia. So he needs all the time to be in control, all the time to be monitoring, all the time to be, is she cheating on me, is she stealing from me, is she, you know. And then he needs to manipulate her, and then he needs to obtain supply from her, and then he needs to, you know. So he's, he, it's not, so he cannot sleep. And indeed, narcissists suffer, majority of them suffer from extreme insomnia and so on. They have sleep disorders, it's very well known. So he cannot really sleep. So he needs a space where there will be an activity, life will go on, but in a totally safe, secure manner, and something that doesn't matter to him really much. He's not going to lose a lot of money, like in the board of directors, he's not going to lose his wife, you know, what can he lose? Nothing. So he comes to the dominatrix and he says, I want to sleep, now you take over. Take over the world for 20 minutes. And he knows that when he wakes up after 20 minutes, nothing has happened. There's no, no damage, no risk, no cost. It's cost-free, except a few euros. Yeah? It's cost-free. It's a cost-free situation that allows him to... So he creates this haven, this enclave. Now, many people do that, not only narcissists, healthy people. So you have, for example, in very busy cities, people who suddenly go to a, a, a temple, a Buddhist temple. And all they do is they sit on the floor and meditate for 20 minutes. And that's their safe environment. And these people run mega corporations, major banks, government agencies, and so on. But they need these 20 minutes of going to a safe space where they can hand over control, rest, sleep, relax, knowing that nothing bad will happen. And then 20 minutes later, they go back to being whatever, the tyrants, as you call them. This is essentially this, this part is a kind of meditation, yoga, relaxation technique.